Hello, everyone, and welcome in to CrushTheStreet.com. I got a first-time guest on the show today. He's His name is Jim Gowans. He's the CEO and president of Arizona Mining, uh, a company with a great story sitting on a monster-sized deposit of zinc. And it's a junior company. And uh, what's interesting is Jim Gowans was the former co-president of the largest gold producer in the world, Barrett Gold, and uh, left the company and uh, became the CEO of Arizona Mining. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, he's been a part of building the, the largest zinc mine in the world, Red Dog. Uh, his roots go very, very deep in the resource sector. And uh, we're going to discuss metals today with really one of the few people who can truly uh, has truly the qualifications to comment on it. So, uh, Jim Gowans, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Yeah, no, uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, Jim, in 2005, I was looking at this, the HUI was at levels that we are seeing today, you know, a, a metric for, for the gold miners here. And um, the yeah. only difference was that gold was only around $400, and today gold is at $1,300, and we're seeing these uh, miners at the same level. So uh, in your opinion, is this just the start of what is yet to come for resource stocks and gold for that matter? Yeah, and I, I would tend to, uh, just to preface that, I would also tend to separate uh, the, I call the base metal type uh, resource stocks uh, as to the gold. I think the gold the equities and gold and silver equities tend to, because uh, they, they have a bit more complexity to them because uh, of the, uh, the the commodity they produce, gold and silver, and gold more is a uh, sometimes a commodity and sometimes acts like a currency and i think uh, i think that's where you start to see things happening uh now where the in back in 2005 or from 2002 to 5 you saw a lot of uh, companies on un, uh, unwinding their hedge positions uh and start start to take off uh and then as uh, the ground the, you know the thing stabilized then you saw the world recession start to hit and but i think the it's it's positioned to go back up again. I would uh, I would argue that uh, gold is going to start moving up again. I know everybody's looking at see what Yellen's going to do on Friday, but uh, you might see a little bit of correction. You certainly saw some correction in the stock market yesterday to the resource uh, sector, but I, I think it's more of a kind of a correction or profit taking. I think you're going to see, particularly the gold, is going to continue to rise. Just because I think the world economic situation is such that uh, it can't do anything but yeah, well, and, I that's, think, and I think and I think you see that the same thing happening with the resources now because our our you know when you look at the base metals whether it's lead zinc copper uh, they're all down and nickel they're all down at uh, pretty low levels relative to to what they historically have been uh, and I think I think you're going to start to see that uh, going up there has not been the uh, expiration investment and uh, so and as a at the end of the day, you still have to use them to develop countries. So I think that's going to, I think that bodes well for this, the resources. Yeah, well, let's touch on that here for a little bit. And I, I want to ask you about, you know, the fundamentals uh, driving higher resource prices here in 2016. And, you know, maybe there's a separation, you know, in your opinion. And again, you know, you have a unique perspective on this because of your background. Uh, but would you attribute the moves we are seeing in the resource sector uh, to fear or fundamental based moves uh, with the flow of capital that is entering the sector? I would say that uh, the flow of capital coming in is actually it's a couple of things. One is I think people uh, look at the general economic condition and, and I think when you when you see the, some of the traditional areas like bonds, uh, right now you you actually pay to keep money in bonds or the negative interest rates which in my you know, my view is uh, is ridiculous, uh, and so people that are starting to invest are saying, "Hey, look! Uh, uh, since resources have been at the bottom of their cycle, I'm, it's a far safer bet for me to to put money into the into the uh, equities, resource equities, than it is to continue to do something where I actually have to." pay to keep money in a bond and uh i think that's a that's a fundamental challenge right now in the in the world economic it just tells you what the state of the economy is for the global global nature and i think that's that's probably causing a lot of the the flow of capital coming into the resource industry 
Uh, Jim, you know, uh, let's get into the the base metals here. Uh, zinc has actually been quite the outperformer in 2016, and much of that has to do with what we've seen uh, as a result of the brutality of the bear market taking its toll on these metals and you know mine shutting down, including Lachine and you know Century Mine, which is was Australia's largest mine, and Glencore curtailments. And if you would, please give us the background as to why zinc is actually up an astounding 50% uh, since the yeah, start of this up year. About, yeah, you're right. It's up about 50%, and uh, I, I don't think that's surprising at all. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, interested me to get involved in this instead of retiring, the, uh, uh, because it gave me an opportunity to, to get back to my roots in the, in the lead zinc business, where I was for almost 20 years. And uh, I think the fundamentals of zinc are pretty solid right now. Now, the, the, there was major uh, uh, shutdowns. I mean, Century and Machine ran out of ore, and so that, that took off almost uh, three-quarters of a million uh, tons of concentrate on annual production-wise. And, uh, and then you saw a severe uh, curtailment of some of the ore uh, higher cost uh, or, or higher cost mines, uh, you know, with uh, uh, people like Glencore cutting back. Uh, and also in China is actually where they produce about half of the zinc. Uh, they actually started shutting down some of the smaller operations that are environmentally causing lots of damage and uh, have very very poor safety records. So there are in 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 zinc more than any other base metal. You have these this fundamental shortage uh, being created by a, a, a combination of uh, of events. One from major mines running out of ore to uh, to uh, um, um, curtailment in, in other areas. And so I think that's where you're going to see it. And, and there hasn't been a lot of investment in uh, exploration for, for zinc for quite a long time. Uh, and so I think uh, it's going to create a, a shortage of uh, concentrates. You can see that in the treatment charges of the smelters and refiners around the world. They've they've dropped in half so even if the price of zinc doesn't go up uh, even if it stays at a dollar five which I think it's going to continue to climb uh, zinc concentrate producers are in a, in a pretty good uh, way right now because their treatment charges the price has gone up and their treatment charges have gone down by half so it's a uh, it's good time to invest in in the zinc market for sure and the fundamentals are there. You have to, zinc is actually uh, probably the most unique of the base metals. If you look at lead or copper, uh, the price goes too high on them. There's a, and aluminum is another case where you get a lot of uh, recyclability, uh, where people bring back and they melt down the wires or they take the lead batteries and start recycling. But the nature of zinc is the fact that 60% of uh, zinc metal goes to galvanizing. So it either goes on a coating of uh, for structural steel for buildings, which stays and and then protects it from rusting, or onto the automobile industry. And now the amount of uh, zinc per car has continued to climb as uh, as people expect the cars to last longer. And and you can't recycle that. Uh, Sixty percent. That's basically uh, goes in a form that it gets it's processed and gone out of the off the market. So I think the combination of what zinc is used for and uh, where we are in the world, it's making some strong fundamentals. Jim, you being the the co-president of Barrick and then leaving the largest gold producer in the world to head up Arizona Mining, you know, I can only imagine that you've seen something special with this company uh, to make that move. And I I want you to share with us uh, what that was. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I was retiring from Barrick uh, and uh, decided to move out west uh, into Vancouver. British Columbia is where I came from. I grew up in, uh, I was born in a lead zinc smelter town and grew up in one of the largest uh, lead zinc mines in the world and at the Sullivan Mine in, in Kimberley. So I was coming back with his family and uh, got a call out of the blue from Richard Warp. How would you like to get involved in this? And I said, well... I only, at my stage of the career, I only interested in something where I think I can add a lot of value and also something that's exciting to do. And uh, I said, give me a ticket. I'll go down to Arizona and take a look at this, what you have. And if it looks uh, intriguing or interesting, uh, then I'll get involved. And 
that's what happened. I went down, I started to look at the core when going over with uh, Don Taylor, our, our CEO, and I went, holy smokes, uh, this may give me the opportunity to build my lucky seventh mine uh, in my career and and get back to the, the roots. It's a very exciting deposit. It's going to be a major world-class deposit of uh, zinc, and I, I said, i just like to be involved, and that's that's how it all started. And, uh, and it as we've been drilling and continue to drill our, our program this year, uh, all that's done is just reinforce my my initial view on on this project. Yeah, I was actually talking to Richard Wark, the chairman of Arizona Mining, and he pointed out to me that the company is really, you know, one of the only juniors with a project uh, of this magnitude in their hands that that isn't held by a major. And I, I want you to discuss, you know, how does the Taylor deposit stack up against other zinc projects around the world? I think probably, uh, you know, the resource that we published in, in February or thereabouts at about 39 or call it 40 million tons to round off to the nearest uh, big number. It is probably in the top 20 uh, deposits. Everything above that uh, is owned by a major at Tech or MMG or Glencore or uh, Vedanta. So, uh, you know, and our goal is to try and uh, increase that resource. And obviously, as we've uh, released the drilling results, uh, we've been having some pretty positive results. We're continuing to uh, move towards that objective of trying to double that up so it's it's already within the top 20 and anything that we do uh, uh, here on in is just going to add to that and uh, some of those big mines uh, that were the top 20 in the world have all shut down uh, Sullivan has gone down Pine Point is down Century's down um and you're you're saying the machine is down, so you're you're seeing uh, some of these big uh, big operations are all having a shut down because they're running out of uh, running out of ore, and so I think this is only going to bode well for Arizona uh, mining as a as a world class zinc uh, deposit in the future. Uh, Jim, is there anything else uh, that early shareholders can look forward to? You know, if, if they did want to partner up with Arizona Mining, uh, what they have to look forward to down the line here? Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, there's we're continuing to do what I call two objectives in our drilling program this year. One is to extend the resource across into the big new uh, private patented lands called the trench property, which we obtained uh, at the start of the year in Canada in January, uh, and also to expand the, the existing resource and to bring up the quality of the existing resource from an inferred to a, a measured and indicated so that we can do an economic evaluation on that. And our goal uh, is, is to, before the end of uh, Q1 of 2017, is to put out a, a PA or preliminary economic assessment to, to establish the the economic value of the, of the deposit we have to date, uh, and then to push for a feasibility study by the end of uh, next year. So that's our that's our short term goals, uh, and um, and we're and we're executing on those uh, as we speak. You know, and you, what you're talking about is is about literally doubling uh, your resource. You know, eighty to a hundred tons. Uh, give our give our listeners an idea of where that would put the Taylor deposit. How would that stack Arizona mining, uh, you know, the the project compared to all the other projects around the world? And as it is, it's in the top 20. Well, even even historically, if you look at, if you have 100 million tons of, uh, you know, combined lead zinc, uh, then that basically puts you in the top half a dozen uh, deposits in the world for, for lead zinc. You know, the biggest one being Broken Hill, uh in australia uh and then and then you have MacArthur river and uh Sullen mine and some of the the big famous ones like that and so we we would definitely be up in the probably about the top six or seven i think uh depending on what we end up with as a resource so yeah that, pretty uh, pretty sig pretty significant uh so well, that that is really uh, significant and uh, very unique, obviously, to it's, see this. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I mean, uh, I was a young engineer when I did the feasibility study for Polaris. Mine was the world's most northerly 
base metal, and that was a lead zinc property. Uh, uh, and that at the time was about the 11th largest, uh, and we've already surpassed that in terms of uh, tonnage and pounds of metal. Um, and Red Dog Mine, of course, which was uh, is up in the top three. I think it's number two uh, behind Rampura in uh, in India, and I think that's uh, so we would be going up into that area. And uh, to be able to have the opportunity to to, to do one more uh, world class mine of of this size is uh, is pretty exciting, I have to admit. Uh, Jim, you know, as a, a resource entrepreneur, uh, someone who's just been very successful in business, I just want to ask you if you would share any words of wisdom uh, with our audience who, you know, are interested in, you know, making money, protecting their wealth, and just moving forward, you know, with a better life. Uh, any words of wisdom you'd like to share? Uh, I'm not, uh, I think uh, certainly uh, I'm very interested in, in making uh, Arizona uh, a significant investment opportunity for uh, investors. Uh, that's been our goal, uh, and I, I think that will continue to be our goal uh, as we push towards the feasibility study. And uh, and I think the fundamentals of our zinc are good. You can see that in all the other zinc shares. So and I think I think the resource uh, sector. I think you're going to see a, a lot of investment in the resource sector uh, because uh, the world continues to need the, the metals and. Uh, to to produce and develop, and I think that's uh, I think that's where we are. And I've lived in Africa and Indonesia, and been to all the continents except Antarctica. And, and I feel pretty strongly that uh, as as the world develops, uh, there's going to be that de- continued uh, increase in demand for for our products. Well, I, I got to be honest with you. I, I would have never have thought I'd be on the phone speaking with the former president uh, of Barrick Gold. So I, it, it was an absolute privilege uh, speaking with you today and, and to talking with you about uh, your next venture here. So, uh, and what a time to be talking about it while precious metals and, and resource stocks are just in the early stages of of this bear mar or bull market i should say uh if yeah. people want to learn more about uh arizona mining please share uh how they can learn more and how they can partner with the company if they so choose to do oh sure there's uh there's uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, places where they can learn more about it. i mean obviously the the quickest way is to go to our website. We have a website, and we've put a, an investor relations presentation there, and give a, you get a summary of what's what's a, uh, you can see this uh, all the latest information, uh, the press releases. The, and the other thing is, I think you know, and as an investor, you're going to be judicious. You need to find out what other people think. And uh, so we've had analysts come down and review our our project. Uh, Currently, uh, it's uh, RBC, the Royal Bank of Canada, National Bank of Canada, the Scotia Bank uh, have all had analysts come down and do a thorough review of the project. Uh, and so they, you can go into their websites or, or talk to somebody in their uh, resource investment sector, and they will be able to give you that information. It's it's freely available for the, for them and their clients. Uh, and in, next week, I'm going to be down in Arizona again uh, with a whole other uh, list of uh, analysts, uh, lots of other banks and uh, investment uh, organizations like Raymond James uh, are keen to, uh, they've been following our, our stock uh, and our story, uh, and they're coming down to see for themselves and to go through the, the numbers. And so you'll be able to... Uh, to pick up uh, all their uh, analysis and reports uh, in due in due form as well, probably in the next month or two after that. They usually take about a month to come out, but so it'll be lots of there'll be lots of uh, public information available on our our stock. If, if you don't go to our website, you can get it uh, from all the major Canadian banks and some of the other investment uh, organizations. Well, you heard it here first, everyone, uh, about Arizona Mining. Uh, Jim Gowans, CEO and President. Uh, Jim Gowans, thanks for coming on the show with us today and sharing with us your knowledge and uh, just your new venture with us. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks.
Thanks so much, Kenneth, and uh, it's it's great to have people to show interest. Uh, I'd like everybody to be excited about this as I am.